Coming up on my Alpha News this morning, businesses in our region continue to rebuild after being heavily damaged by floodwaters this past summer. And a company all the way from the Empire State traveled to our region to help people who have lost everything get a new place to stay. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning to you. It's almost 5 o'clock on this Friday morning. I'm Dakota Makris. Good morning to you. We made it to the end of the work week. Let's head over to meteorologist Cameron Aaron for a look at our forecast. And Cameron, yesterday, you know, I said, you bring the warmer temperatures. <laughs> no. I, Not this morning. I misspoke. Yeah, you did. <laughs> this morning it's chilly out there for sure. Mm -hmm. So I hope you grab the jacket before you walk out the door because you are going to need it. But later on today you can kind of trade that jacket for some sunglasses. It's going to be really nice out there. Let's go over to I-64 this morning. Here's a live look in Rowan County. We are looking at quiet conditions this morning. Current temperature at 41 degrees. So it is pretty chilly over at Moorhead this morning. 36 in Manchester, 37 in Harlan, 39 for Williamsburg. And and 46 over in Pikeville up on satellite and radar. We are looking at a clean sweep this morning. All is quiet. We are dry, but the big story we are watching out for possibly some fire weather. We do have a fire weather warning for all of central and western Kentucky. None of our counties are included in that, but we still have a risk for some increased fire danger. So just be sure that you keep that in mind today. Here is a look at your Friday forecast. We stay dry under a sunny sky, warming up nicely into the middle and upper 60s later on today, but we are tracking uh, some rain chances this weekend. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. Dakota. Thank you. Well, new this morning, emergency officials in Clay County are asking for your help in finding a missing woman. Clay County Emergency Management issued a golden alert for 68-year-old Peggy Burton early this morning. You see her on your screen. She was last seen in the Collins Gibson Road area driving a silver 2011 Kia Soul with license plate number BEP668. She is 5 feet and 1 inch tall and about 165 pounds. If you see her or know where she might be, you are asked to call Clay County Dispatch at the number you see at the bottom of your screen. And also new this morning, a traffic stop leads to led to several serious charges for one Kentucky man. In a news release, the Knox County Sheriff's Department says 39-year-old Daryl Eversole was pulled over because of canceled tags on Highway 1232. Well, when he got out of his car, Eversole laid a loaded gun on the driver's seat. It was then discovered he is a convicted felon. With the help of a Corbin police detective, a, a search of Smith's car discovered a bag under a back seat filled with different drugs, digital scales, brass knuckles, and ammo. Fentanyl was also found in the center console. Eversole is being held in the Knox County Detention Center with a host of different charges. Well, we have some sad news this morning. The official death toll from the historic flooding that hit our region in late July went up by two people. Governor Andy Bashir announced Thursday it is now up to 43 people. The two newest deaths were people who were suffering health conditions arising from flooding. One lived in Breathitt County, the other in Letcher County. One woman, 60-year-old Vanessa Baker from Breathitt County, is still missing. Yesterday, the governor also said FEMA approved more than $76 million in grants for more than 8,000 households. More than 53 million have been approved under the U.S. Small Business Administration. 276 people are still staying at state parks. 532 people are being housed in 200 travel trailers. The Team Eastern Kentucky Flood Relief Fund has raised more than $10 million. Electric County businesses are still rebuilding two months after the flood. Local businessman Colin Fultz, who owns the Kentucky Mist Distillery and other businesses, lost a lot of property in the flood. While the distillery is up and running, he says his other rental spaces are taking a lot of time and effort. There's six businesses here, so we started at number one, and then we're just working our way up, and, and then we'll be able to let those people move back in as we finish. Well, he says he was unable to get a loan from the Small Business Administration, so he is having to find other ways to pay for repairs. Mountain Life Church and Jenkins and Walmart are partnering up again to help flood survivors recover. On October 22nd, the church and Walmart associates will set up in Whitesburg to, to give out groceries to anyone who has filed for relief assistance from FEMA. Mountain Life Pastor Brian Hogg says survivors will get all kinds of food. It'll be full of non-perishable groceries. They're giving a $25 gift card so they can go to Walmart and buy meat. 
the donation setup will be at Pine Mountain Grill. Well, two women from Breathitt County are receiving brand new homes this week from a company called Hunter Homes and Shelters from New York. The founder of the company created and patented a lightweight, strong, energy efficient emergency shelter home that can be constructed in one day with four to six workers. We're proud of the product. It's uh, because of the in structurally insulated panels with polyurethane foam. They're unbelievably energy efficient. Um, you, you can heat and cool this thing for about 40 bucks a month in electric. It, it, it's really amazing. It, the two women are expected to get moved in very soon. The home should both be finished by this weekend. Hazard Community and Technical College students started a coat drive this week for those impacted by flooding. Multiple student organizations are helping out with the drive. Students we talked with on Thursday said they began planning the coat drive in late September. Donations are accepted at the Hazard, Lees College, Technical and Leslie County Center campuses. We just wanted to relieve some of the hardships that they faced because they've lost all their clothing items and their homes and we're going into the colder months so we're hoping that these coats will help re replenish their winter wardrobe. They are collecting coats until October 28th then they will distribute them on November 4th. Well thank you so much for getting your chilly Friday morning started with us here on Mountain News this morning when we come back the National Park Service takes action to save forests filled with some of America's oldest living trees from the dangers of out of control forest fires. And the forecast is looking pretty good as we close out the work week. I have all those details coming up.